Hey Masters of Speed, it's Terra Master, and because I have special powers, I asked the Speed Duel League community. Speed Duel League, by the way, the biggest online Speed Duel community. Link in the description below if you want to join that. I asked the Speed Duel League community what cards they would want added to the Speed Duel card pool. I, of course, was also involved in these discussions and card suggestions in fact i may have suggested a lot of these <laughs> but this is a wish list from the whole community now this is not necessarily a wish list for one specific product i.e midterm box the next product as of the recording of this video however this is a wish list of things that people in the community would like to see in the game regardless of whether that's now or next year. Now, uh, we're gonna say, let's focus on GX because of the fact that there, I nobody did talk about tuners or synchros or anything like that. So we're not gonna go on anything past GX. We're gonna focus on GX, but again, could be this year, could be next year. As long as it's before the end of the GX era, these are the cards that the community wants to see. So let's go through them. We're gonna split them into, I believe, five categories the first of which is zombies because zombies are cool we already have cool zombie support cards like book of life and haunted shrine so you take those two cards and you give zombies just a few more tools and zombies can be a really good deck all right so here's one pyramid turtle now this is really cool for several reasons all right it's a floater yes but it's earth so rat actually floats into it, right? And then you look at cards we already have that it supports. 2,000 or less defense zombie monsters, right? Vampire Lord, it floats into Vampire Lord. But more importantly, it floats into King of Skull Servants. Now that is absolutely absurd. Okay, to, to get out your king, without using your normal summon. To have a special summonable King of Skull Servant, you don't even need your opponent to attack, right? At only 1200, this thing can crash into your opponent's monsters and come uh, and turn into a King of Skull Servants, which could be 3000 or even 4000 maybe by the time you make that play. So it gives you a neat little battle phase special summon, which could be really good. So uh, yeah, Pyramid Turtle would be absurd. Uh, Gozuki obviously is great because once per turn during your main phase, you send a zombie monster from your deck to the graveyard. Um, also, um, if it's sent to the graveyard, you banish a zombie monster from the graveyard, except, a, except another Gozuki, and special summon a zombie monster from your hand. Now that's really good for things like uh, tribute zombies, right? Like we already have Despair from the Dark. So it, it works with that. But these two cards also both work with the other two zombie monsters we have here, which is one is Ale Blood. Now we already introduced uh, Gemini monsters in Speed Duels when we got the uh, Ancient Gear Knight, I believe it was, right? So no harm in putting another Gemini monster that doesn't have anything to do with Gemini monsters, but it's just a really good effect, which you need to normal summon again to activate. 2100, one tribute, six, level six monster. And it's once per turn, it's pleasure summon a zombie monster from your hand or graveyard. And then, if Illblood leaves the field though, everything that is special summoned is destroyed. That's fine, because it gives you that swarm capability if you manage to actually Gemini summon this thing. So really cool, and if you special summon it uh, from Pyramid Turtle or Gozuki or, you know, Haunted Shrine or Book of Life, then you can go ahead and Gemini summon at the same turn, so that's really cool. Would make zombies actually competitively viable. Um, Ryu Koki is another one. Um, this is just another one tribute zombie monster that is uh, matching the stat line of Jinzo and Monarchs at 2400. Also got 2k defense, so you know it's better against like your Book of Moon or something than even a Jinzo is. And um, it also has the effect, which could come up sometimes, of if it battles a warrior spellcaster, you just straight up pop that thing. Now there's not things in speed to a meta right now, which are necessarily above 2400, which this thing would be used to pop. But obviously it could be the future, so that effect could come up as long as the card is even somewhat playable, right? Alright, so that's the zombie. <clears throat> now, um, again with all these, if there's anything that you think is left out or should be added, 
that you would also like to see, then go ahead and throw it in the comments. But uh, let's move on to category number two, which is actually Cyber Dragons. Cyber Dragons are Cyber Dragon Dre. Cyber Dragon Dre name becomes Cyber Dragon while it's on the field or in the graveyard. And the second part is very important because it pops off things like Overload Fusion or any other future graveyard fusion you might get that would help Cyber Dragons. Or other cards that are Cyber Dragon support cards, which can um, interact with Cyber Dragon in the graveyard. So that's very important there. Plus, it's 1800, so a much better stat line than just Proto Cyber Dragon. Uh, makes all Cyber Dragons you control at level 5, which is irrelevant right now. Uh, you cannot special summon except Machine Monsters. That doesn't matter if you're playing a Cyber deck. And then if it's banished, here's another important one. If you banish as a fusion material, you target a Cyber Dragon monster you control, cannot be destroyed by battle card effects this turn. So it can make another copy of itself or a real Cyber Dragon or some kind of other Cyber Dragon monster you have coming up next, wink wink, that, uh, and make that thing unable to be destroyed for this turn. So um, good, good card, much better card than any Cyber Dragon support we have right now, so it would be cool to see. Also, we have Cyber Dragon Naxter. Again, this is what I was talking about. The Drake can also protect this and other Cyber Dragons too. Name becomes Cyber Dragon, Field or Graveyard. I already explained that. You discard one other monster and it special summoned itself. You target a machine monster with 2100 attack or death in your graveyard. Gee, I wonder what that's meant to target Cyber Dragon. Special summon that. And then no special throwing some machine. Again, this is a very uh, reasonable restriction to have on these monsters because they're supposed to be played in pure Cyber Dragon decks. And uh, yeah, so it's basically a Cyber Dragon revival tool, which is really cool to me at least. Um, then we have Cyber Emergency, which is essentially a search. Um, add a cyber light machine that cannot be normal summoner set. Ignore that one. That's not relevant right now from the cards I've mentioned. Or one Cyber Dragon monster from your deck to your hand. There it is. That's the relevant part. It's a Cyber Dragon Searcher, which would be really cool. Now, this has the potential of being used generically in non-Cyber Dragon decks. But seeing as Cyber Dragon itself is not actually played too heavily in the speed duel meta i'm honestly not that worried about that happening very frequently enough to to make me afraid of this card anyway um if the activation of the card was negated you can discard a card and add this card to your hand so that's actually really cool it comes with negation protection which i've honestly never seen on a spell before but i'm sure other spell cards exist that do the same thing i've just never seen it all right i am i am a Yugi boomer admittedly all right, the next category, there might actually be six categories now that I'm looking at it. The next category, however, is Ancient Gears. So we have Ancient Gear Wyvern. When it's normal or special, you simply search an Ancient Gear monster. And when it attacks, your opponent can activate monster effects until the end of damage step. Now this is really cool because it's the first time in Speed Duels we would have a normal summonable monster without tribute because we have tributes. Two tribute summonable monsters that do that. But normal summonable monster without tributing that can uh, go over a floater and negate that floater's effect of floating. Also, taste things like Nidoria and Flip Effect Monsters and Sphere. It, it also actually blocks Sphere Kribo, which other stuff we have does not do. So that is, that's really cool for that reason alone. It could potentially see play, but definitely would see play in Ancient Gear decks, like 100% immediately. Um, speaking of, we also have Ancient Gear Gadgetron Dragon. Now, this only exists on this wish list to provide a better target for Gear Town's effect than what we currently have in Toon Ancient Gear Golem. Um, obviously has that normal Ancient Gear effect of no spell traps on attack until the end of damage step. And um, and then the rest of it is just uh, what you tribute for it when you tribute summon it, which we're not going to worry about because we don't have those monsters and we're not putting them on this list. However, one thing I will say about that is the Ancient Gear gadget can actually be used for this. In my mind, it is possible to get this card without getting green, red, or yellow gadget because we technically have the ability to have those monsters exist in terms of Ancient Gear gadget. I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, uh, we have a spell here, Ancient Gear Catapult. If you control no monsters, target one face-up card you control, destroy it, and if you do... Now, this phrase has been explained to me where, and if you do is actually a simultaneous phrase so the card you controlled being destroyed and special summoning ancient gear monster from your deck ignoring summoning conditions yes it summons ancient gear golem 
Um, that's simultaneous, therefore Giratown will not miss timing. So the goal with this obviously is to combine it with Giratown to get, you know, Gathertron Dragon or Toon or, or whatever it is you can get. And then get the Ignoring Summoning Condition Monster 2, whether you choose to play Golem, whether you choose to play Beast, whatever it is. Or whether you say, nope, we got if we got Gathertron Dragon, why am I just not going to constantly play more of that? Makes sense. It would also be insane if this card was searchable by Wyvern. It would really make the deck be able to pop off, which Ancient Gear is kind of meant to do. It's supposed to be a fast deck which pops off, right? So this, I think, allows the deck to play its natural playstyle rather than what the deck has devolved into now when people do attempt to play it in speed, which is some kind of weird control deck. We don't need that. It also has a graveyard effect where you again target a card, face of card you can throw destroy it. So really good. It's essentially two gear town pops in one card, which is actually insane. And then the, again, the simultaneous. And if you do, you special summon a token. So not only do you get to special summon off the gear town pop, you also get to get a token, which you can then tribute for another ancient gear monster. So again, it really allows the deck to pop off, which the deck should do because that's what ancient gears are meant to do. <clears throat> Speaking of popping off, there's another way Ancient Gears can pop off. It's not just Gear Town. It's also Ancient Gear Hunting Count, where if it's normal summon, you do burn damage. So that's the part that gives me a little bit of reservation. But I don't think Ancient Gears care about burn other than this card. I don't think burn decks will care about this card other than... Um, or they just won't care about it because 600 damage to them one time is probably not enough for them being stuck with the 1,000,000 vanilla right it has the attack effect although that's not really relevant for something a thousand attack but here it is once per turn you can fuji summon ancient gear monster using monsters from your hand or field as fusion material so it takes away the need for poly and it gives you one of your materials in itself for ultimate ancient gear golem now with wyvern searching this card and giving you a plus the turn prior it's actually possible that hunting hound is playable is it guaranteed to make Ultimate Ancient Gear Golem playable? Uh, maybe not. However, it gives it a chance and, you know, that's all we can ask for, right? All right. Uh, moving on to the next category, which is Elemental Heroes. Elemental Hero Solid Soldier is the first card we have here. When it's normal summon, you special summon level 4 lower hero monster from your hand. And then if it's sent to the graveyard from a monster zone by a card effect polymerization by the way counts as a spell effect sorry not card effect spell effect so won't work with fusion party because fusion party is not a spell effect however it will work with poly um you target a hero monster except itself and you special summon it in defense so this card works insane if you were to fuse it with any other hero summon your fusion get that hero monster back it's stopping you from nagging as hard from a fusion summon, which is very, 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 very important. All right. Blazeman. When it's normal spell summon, you add a poly from your deck. You're in. So plus one to get that poly, which again stops you from nagging as much when you do use that poly to fusion summon. Right? But Blazeman also does something else, which is cool. All right. Um, which is, if you activate its effect, you cannot summon special summon rest of turn except fusion monster. That's fine. But you send the E hero monster from your deck to the grave, and then it basically copies that monster. It becomes that monster's attribute, attack, and defense. And you can essentially use this to manipulate what fusion material you want, and also set up your graveyard for a card we're going to talk about in a few cards here. You have Elemental Hero Prisma at first, before before we get to that card, right? Which is, once per turn, reveal a fusion monster from your extra deck, send a fusion material list on that card to the graveyard. This card name becomes that sent monster until the end phase, so this sets up your graveyard fusion. It sets up anything else you want to do in the graveyard, and it also acts as a fusion substitute. However, the drawback, if you want to call it that, is it eats your normal stuff. All right? So, my best... Uh, use for this card individually would have to be with Dragoon, right? So you send Dogma from deck, you you not only have you taken one brick, which is Dogma, out of your deck, now as long as you have Plasma, you Fusion Party off, you summon your Dragoon, and it's got the two materials there, despite you not hard drawing the two materials. 
So that's just an example of how good Prisma can be with any good fusion monster. All right, next we have another Gemini monster. However, this one's Gemini effect does not matter at all. All right, we have Elemental Hero Neil's alias, and this I think is just to give heroes a beater, a 1900 beater, which uh, just is searchable because heroes do a lot of searching. We saw, uh, we have Rhoda already. We could potentially get Emergency Call, which I'm actually going to talk about in a couple cards here as well. So because of all that searching heroes do, heroes having a strong 1900 beater is really good. There's also a card that you can see on the screen right now, but you may not, you know, realize it, but it's one we'll talk about near the end that uh, this card goes really well with. All right, let's talk about the card I promised you when we were talking about Blazeman, which is Miracle Fusion. It is Graveyard Fusion for Elemental Heroes. This would help carry heroes so far to the top, it would be actually just phenomenal. Then we have Hero Flash as our last Elemental Hero spell card. Um, now this obviously implies that we as a community also want H Heated Heart, E Emergency Call, and O Oversoul. Now E Emergency Call searches Neos alias, and O Oversoul can special summon Neos alias from the graveyard. So that's another reason to want Neos alias. And Hero Flash, what Hero Flash does itself is uh allows normal elemental hero monsters to attack their opponent directly this turn again combines with who neos alias now another card before i move on from e heroes and I, I i forgot to talk about the cyber dragon fusion so go back to cyber dragon really quick we have cyber twin dragon it's just cyber dragon plus cyber dragon it's an easier fusion to do than cyber and and it's arguably also a better card because of the double attack ability all right now we have our hero fusion on the wish list which is grand merge two hero normal monsters again you can simply use two copies of neos alias for this which makes your combined levels eight which makes this thing 2400 which is equivalent to a monarch not bad at all and if it destroys the opponent monster by battle you tribute it and special summon a hero monster from their fusion deck ignoring summoning conditions hi i just said fusion deck yugi boomer huh <laughs> even though i've played literally every summoning mechanic anyway that's not the point but uh, this allows you to essentially summon any hero fusion monster you have to make further attacks on your opponent's monsters. Uh, however, it can't attack monsters with level equal or lower than it, so it's got a small restriction on it. But uh, you can use it to attack directly, so you can also use it to finish them off, which is obviously the ideal use. All right, let's move on to our next category, which is kind of the same category, but it's the next category. It's Destiny Heroes, starting with cards that I don't know why we didn't get already, which is Destiny Hero Drill Dark. Um, essentially, it summons itself, and then you can summon another D Hero from hand, with attack equal to or less than this card's attack, uh, which is essentially going to be any other level 4 or lower Destiny Hero that we have in the card pool. But one thing to keep in mind, it's not just those, it also actually special summons Malicious which I think might be the best use for this card is to get that malicious out of your hand and then figure out what you want to do with that malicious, whether it's creature swap, whether it's fusion, whether it's tribute, whatever it is, right? All right. Uh, it also does piercing, which, you know, every card that has drill in its name obviously has to do piercing damage, right? Uh, we have Destiny Hero Celestial. When it declares attack, you target a face of party for the controls. Face of spell, sorry, that would have been really good, huh? Face of card. Face of spell, 500 burn damage. Um, not only that, it also has a graveyard draw two effect. So, for, first of all, the pop effect for face of spells can be used to get rid of any field spell that becomes relevant in speed duels, such as, um, you know, magnetic field was played for a while and still is, obviously, if you play magnets. So, something like that. Um, then, like I said, it's draw two and you have no cards in hand, you banish itself and another Destiny Hero from your graveyard to draw two cards. Only once per turn. I think it's completely fine to have because it requires setup for that draw two to take place. It also requires you to actually be playing more Destiny Hero monsters, which is you playing a D-Hero deck and not abusing this in a some generic good stuff deck. Alright, we also have Decider which level six or higher monsters cannot target this card's attacks. Now you may call that stall, but it's honestly fine because the stat line is only 1600. You can easily kill this 
with things that are level four or lower, you shouldn't even need to go there. Um, then you have this card is no more special summon. You add a hero monster from your graveyard to your hand during the end phase of this turn. That's a good effect, right? It generates you resource advantage during your end phase. And it doesn't do it immediately to us to not be too broken, even though I think that would have been fine too, whatever. Um, but here's the important effect for speed duels. When a card or effect is activated that would inflict damage to you when this card is in your graveyard, return to your hand and make that effect damage zero. Now, negating an effect damage one time can be huge. Now, Nightmare Reel is only 500, right? Per turn, you wouldn't necessarily use this on that. But what you would use this on is Zoma the Spirit. You attack into Zoma with a really big monster, you know, say dangerous, right? You would take 2,000 damage. However, you just use your Decider's effect in Graveyard and bounced it back. Uh, bounced it back from your graveyard to your hand. You gained a card in your hand, plus you negated that Zoma burn damage. You probably take away your opponent's win condition, which could have just been Zoma burn you to death, right? So, uh, really cool. It's also once per turn each effect. Obviously not once per turn, that would be too good. It's once per duel each effect. So yes, you can only negate one burn damage per duel, but that should be enough in speed duel, especially if you negate something as big as a Zoma. All right, last card for Destiny Heroes here is D cubed. Once normal summon, it's treated as a D hero monster, which is really cool for specifically summoning Dogma, but that's not what you really want to use this card for. Um, you can use each of the following effects of DQ once per turn. The first effect is discard two cards, special summon DQ from your hand deck and or graveyard equal to a number discarded. This is really cool. You can set up some D heroes in your graveyard and then go ahead and summon more D cubed. If you do summon two more D cubed, that gives you three, which allows you to summon Dogma or Plasma because they are all obviously treated. I mean, the one that's normal summoned is treated as a Destiny Hero monster. And if it's destroyed by battle or card effect, you send one Destiny Hero monster from your deck to the graveyard again. Graveyard setup for Mali, Dasher, Decider, Celestial, whatever you want to set up in your graveyard. All right. Then we have Jurak Titano. As we move on to our next category, Dinosaurs. There are a lot of people in the community who love dinos. Now this card cannot be special summon. Cannot be targeted by trap or monster effects. Excuse me, immune to parasite? Hello? That is absolutely sick. Also immune to nightmare wheel, by the way. You banish the Jurak monster for its 700 less effect from your graveyard, and it gains a thousand attack. That's right, it goes up to a sweet 4k monster until the end phase runs over moth not only is it immune to parasite but it has the ability just banishing a jurak from your graveyard to run over a perfectly ultimate great moth take that moth anyway we have jurak guaiba now we already have a couple of jurak cards in speed duels which fit titano's effect but guaiba is one of the best ones to have for that and for other dino strategies moving forward guaiba when destroying the opponent monster battle which, remember, Breaker without a counter is exactly 100 less than Guaiba. Very relevant. Um, you special summon a direct monster to your less stuff from your deck, but it cannot declare an attack this turn. So you essentially just get board presence and later graveyard presence if you're going for Titano as your main strategy. And with Dinosaur Kingdom, this guy is actually 2,000, which means it can run over almost any normal summon monster your opponent would have. So uh, really cool, gets you board presence, and with certain skills and buffs, it can destroy a monster battle pretty easily. Then we also have Jurak Impact, which works with big dinos. If you control a dino with 2500 more attack, you just completely get rid of the field. Black Rose Drive in the field, you destroy every single card in the field. Could be really cool and could actually provide the motivation that players need to actually try to play boss dinosaur monsters such as Titan. We also have Giant Rex. Giant Rex is 2,000 normal summon. However, it does have the drawback that we cannot attack directly. And then if it's banished, which some dino support cards do banish dinosaurs from the graveyard, I believe, that we already have, you special summon it. If you do against 200 attack for each of your banished dinosaur monsters, if you use something like Space Time Transcendence, you banish multiple dinosaur monsters. One of them is Giant Rex. Giant Rex comes back at a huge attack points Duh. and then it can go ahead and get to work 
chomping your opponent's monsters. You can also simply play Giant Rex with something like Rock Spirit. And uh, that way Giant Rex just summons itself. And even if it's 2,000, like, hey, that's... You basically just summon Special Summon Rock Spirit for free. And you can play some kind of a beatdown strategy around that. I don't know how good it is. Try it. Okay, now we move on to Counter Fairies. Now I admit, Counter Fairies was me. It was all me. Has always been me. Um, some other people were into Counter Fairies, but it was my my idea to put it on the wish list. So this is this one's all me. Don't blame anyone in the community if you don't like Counter Fairies except me. Uh, Bountiful Artemis Counter Trap is activated immediately after resolves. You draw one card, and those of you who watch me know how much I love to draw one card. Uh, now we have Minerva Scarlet the Sky. Each of the Counter Trap is activated immediately after resolves. Gains 500 attack, which is permanent, by the way. And if Century Sky is on the field, which is our next card, coincidentally, you add a counter trap with a different name than the one activated from your graveyard to your hand. Really cool, recycles counter traps, um, potentially, right? As well as constantly buffs itself when you counter trap something. Century Sky, which is actually huge for this deck because of the first counter trap I'm going to talk to you about, which is Divine Punishment. Um, now again, Century is in the Sky, you have three copies of it already. You can also play Metaverse to essentially have six. Not only that, you can set Metaverse and Divine Punishment at the same time. And then you can flip up that Metaverse in your opponent's standby phase. And that gives you your Sanctuary in the Sky directly activated from deck, which makes your Divine Punishment live. There's a lot of ways, I think, with just these four cards, this deck can actually function amazingly well. Um, and just to give them another counter trap for good measure, we'll give them Ultimate Ravenance. When a spell trap monster is activated, you discard that same type of card. So if you want to negate a monster effect, you discard a monster. And same thing for spell or trap. You negate the activation, destroy it. Now, obviously, the goal would be to activate these counter traps when you have one of these counter fairies on the field um, to create some really cool combos. Now, we move on to our final category. Gemini Spark. This card goes with Neos Alias. You tribute a face of level 4 Gemini monster. Target one card in the field, pop it, and if you do, you draw one card. It says specifically level 4, so it does not work with Ill Blood. It does work with Neos Alias, and it actually also works with Ancient Gear Knight. So potentially, Ancient Gears could also play Knight and Spark, but that's just another direction for that deck to go in. Um, then you could target Gear Town and draw one card. You, you could do funny things if you really wanted to. Uh, although Gear Town would miss timing, I do... No, it would not because this is simultaneous. Someone confirm in the comments if uh, Gemini Spark could be used to indeed trigger Gear Town if you tribute it each in Gear Knight. Uh, regardless of what you tribute it, could it be used to trigger Gear Town or not? I believe yes, because the end if you do should be a simultaneous event. All right. Uh, then we have a Ballista Squad. This is generic removal, um, which I think we really need spot removal. Uh, Gemini Spark was as well. This is basically Gemini Spark, but more generic. However, the cost of being more generic is A, it's a trap, not a quick play spell. And B, is that it does not let you draw one card like Spark does. Uh, tribute a monster just in target one card your opponent controls destroyed. Also, you can only target cards your opponent controls, which like we talked about in the gear town situation could actually be somewhat relevant in some situations. So yeah, essentially you're doing two for one. However, if you find the right way to use this card, you can gain a lot of advantage off of it, which is supposed to be the point, right? Is a card that's not great at first sight, you find ways to gain advantage out of it or certain cards combo with it to give you a huge advantage. All right, next we have the only monster staple that's on the list, which is Armored B. Armored B is really cool, I think, because it's essentially like a shrink on a body, on a 1600 body. So it, and it's once per turn. So once per turn, and this is again, ignition effects on main phase, right? Um, you just take an opponent's monster, you target it and you cut its attack in half. So easy removal for anything, 3200 or below. 3200 would obviously be a crash. So uh, cool, like it doesn't go up to the point where it takes out Moth, but cutting Moth in half can allow you to really run it over with a lot of other things because it would be 1750. So still would be a really, really, really solid card. All right, 
Now we have Book of Taiyu. I think this is Cope. I don't think this card would see much competitive play, but people wanted it to flip up their absorbing jars and, and things like that. So, you know, go ahead, have fun. Who, who am I to tell you no? Um, then we have Fisher, which again is spot removal, which I've already said we need more spot removal in uh, speed duels. We need more one-for-one -one removal. The pro one of the problems with the game right now is that there's a lot of stall cards to stop boss monsters, but there's not a lot of just like straight up removal to stop big monsters, which is why I think the game sometimes develops so much into this, this stally grind, which I think we can avoid by giving ourselves more spot removal like Fisher. All right, then we have Trap Stun, which really exists for the trap meta that we find ourselves living in now, right? So there's a few things this does. So one, it negates Zoma and then eats up your opponent's zone, which is great. Like it's an amazing, it's like the perfect counter to Zoma, whether you're chaining to Zoma or whether that Zoma is already face up and you are then negating it afterwards. And that Zoma do not come back by the way. Um, it also just chains to other traps and negates them. And you can also use it preemptively. So like say counter fairies is a thing, right? You flip this thing, in your standby or, or your start of your main phase right say before you do anything else your opponent either has to negate trap stun or just let trap stun resolve it and they can't use the traps that they have based on for the rest of the turn so uh, that's really good again you can also preemptively i'm sure use this in other situations as well where you don't want to deal with like a chain link like your opponent has two sets right you don't want to wait for them to flip the first one then you trap stun it then they flip that other set and that that other set resolves because that would be the chain link three to your trap stones chain link two. Hope that made sense. Anyway, uh, moving on, we have Mystic Walk, which I I particularly just added in here specifically for Dragoon. Um, and you know, it's not just Dragoon. Obviously, Dragoon makes the best abuse of it because it not only dodges an effect like Defusion or Parasite, but it also then comes back with survival effect. Plus, you would gain three thousand life points. But this can also be used with essentially any monster to dodge any targeting effect, right? So niche use there, like Ballista Squad is obviously better, but this is like the nerfed, like, okay, if we can't have Ballista Squad, can we get Mystic Walk to make Dragoon a little bit more viable? Would be nice. Uh, then you have Forbidden Chalice. Now this is a card a lot of people in the community really like because of its versatility. And I agree, it, that, it, it is a really cool card, right? You target a monster on the field, now, it gains 400 attack, so you can use it as a battle trick in some situations that 400 attack could matter, or you use it for its second effect, is that but its effects are negated. You're using it to negate a monster's effect. Now, there's also some risks with it, right? Say you negate a breaker, now that breaker's 2,000 though. Say you negate the DD Warrior Lady. Well, she's 1,900, so if she was trying to banish something that you have, that's 1900 or below well both both you're gonna lose your monster anyway so this this is a cool card that actually takes some skill i think to know when to play when to activate and which effect you want to really emphasize on and which one you want to benefit from so uh that's the wish list from the speed duel league community again link to join the community in the description below my twitch in the description below and if you made it this far like comment subscribe I will see you for the next video. Terra Master, out.